Okay, go ahead. Um, you want me to start? Whoever would like to go could each go one one after. Well, I can make a few comments. Um, so it's a little bit um, missing information, so people understand what he's saying. Um, one of the information, it's true that high carbohydrate, you have to determine the type of carbohydrate, not just high carbohydrate intake. Certainly, we know that processed carbohydrates and high glycemic carbohydrates are linked to increased risk of dementia. And, uh, and high glycemic diets are also linked to 87% increased risk of breast cancer as well. But that's because they're studying non-bean carbohydrates. When you, took, when you substitute beans, which are another high carbohydrate food, for the carbohydrate they're using in the study, you don't see those same negative effects. So it's not the carbo, so it's the type of carbohydrate that plays a huge role. Uh, beans are the example of the ultimate slowly digestible carbohydrates that have more resistant starch and and um and also more higher in protein. But in any case, it's all about what food they're comparing it to. And a lot of these studies are using muffins as their carbohydrate source. It's like another author saying fat is bad because because um the, you know the fat when you eat fat you get fatter. But the study on that is showing oil against a muffin, showing oil is worse than a muffin. It's not oil compared to a nut. So in other words, so they're, they're not giving all the information so people can make a clear distinction here. And the, so that's that's one thing. The other thing is, is that I am saying that both my experience and the overwhelming amount of evidence in the scientific literature show that some people genetically don't convert the fats, the ALA and the, and the beneficial fatty acids from green vegetables and hemp seeds and walnuts into more efficiently into EPA and DHA. So there's a, a continuum of, of variance between one person and another and how much what their omega-3 index is. And the omega-3 index correlates exceptionally well with shrinkage of the brain and cognitive impairment in later life. And also low omega-3 index in the blood, which doctor, um, which, which the people I think that there's general agreement in the scientific literature and Dr. Cousins is certainly bringing this out in those studies that low omega-3 index in the blood is also linked to more inflammation and more propensity to develop even Parkinson's and other and other toxic mediated xenobiotic, which are toxins in the external environment. The body's less resistant to xenobiotic damage when you have an, a pro-inflammatory state with a low omega-3 index. And those were my findings on these healthy eating vegans that they, some of them who developed low omega-3 index had an increased probability of developing dementia or Parkinson's. And I don't want that to happen to people I recommend. On the other hand, you know, just like we're talking about fat or just like we're talking about carbohydrate, it's the type of fat and the type of carbohydrate that's important to um, make sure we're addressing um, right now. And because fish eaters also have, you know, in the past have had more omega, better omega-3 balance and has some advantages, the fish of yesteryear is not the fish of today with all the microplastics, the BMAA in the, in the, and the, 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 um, the runoff from agriculture, fish farming, and commercial and commercial fertilizers that penetrate the, the waterways. And we have a, a, a overbloom, algae bloom, and cyanobacteria and other toxins in the water that we're really taking our risks into our life at, at risk from eating all these toxic fish. And so in other words, we're trying to get the benefit and that that's so we're, so I'm saying to people is that don't ignore your omega-3 index on a vegan diet. It is important because the low omega-3 index increases your susceptibility and a low omega-3 index is also associated with atrial fibrillation as Dr. Cousins said as well, but overtaking fish oils and take can also, and too much of that can also increase risk of uh, cardiac arrhythmias. But, the, but um, we're also um, demonstrated that the ultra low fat diet by avoiding nuts and seeds recommended by a lot of nutritional gurus of people that participate in these conferences for years and have excited a lot of the vegan community to think low fat is better by avoiding nuts and seeds is not a scientific um, viewpoint. It's an anti-science viewpoint because the science shows that um, increased levels of nuts and seeds in the diet decrease all-cause mortality, especially cardiovascular mortality by about 40% in many different studies that corroborate each other. Tremendous benefits from eating nuts and seeds. And if we go on to subjects of meat versus, you know, animal products versus cause of death, the most important data we have is when people switch meat from some other healthy, not when they switch meat to chicken or switch meat to bread or, or rice or pasta, you don't see much improvement. It's when they switch from meat to nuts and seeds or meat to beans, but meat to nuts and seeds have more protective effects or lowering animal protein 
and from all sources of animal protein and increasing plant protein from nuts and seeds is what science shows has the most powerful effect at reducing cardiovascular death and extending human lifespan. I'll let the other people comment now. Thank you. I'll jump in, Joel Kahn. You know, um, some of what Dr. Cousins speaks about is totally consistent with Joel Furman's long stand and something that I've agreed with, which is that there are ultra low fat plant-based diets. And I still use them very selectively in people that can't walk to the mailbox without angina and people with, you know, avoiding bypass with critical three vessel coronary disease. I think there's still a role. But uh, Doc Furman has argued for years that nuts and seeds in a higher fat version of a a whole food plant-based diet is healthier. I agree with him. There was internally a rather big fight among some of the plant-based stocks in the last few years. Uh, I, this is public now, but we watched Dr. Michael Clapper agonize over this issue and recently announced in a very widely viewed YouTube that he has come over to Dr. Furman and my side that you can measure. People need to know this. There's a blood test. Dr. Furman alluded to it, but very few patients get it. The omega-3 index or omega check. If you're eating hemp and chia and flax, get your blood check. And if you're a poor converter over to EPA, DHA, add some algal oil, EPA, DHA, and get your level up where you do put your brain at risk. And in my practice, and I've checked omega index in thousands and thousands of patients in a heart clinic, it is the number one biggest nutritional deficiency. And maybe 40% of my patients are vegan, but many are just omnivores from the community. They're omega-3 deficient too. That's a rare patient that's eating a lot of salmon that isn't. So it's a huge nutritional deficiency to replace. We have to be a little cautious because I think Dr. Cousins got it wrong. The latest data is, and Dr. Furman just alluded to it, very high levels of fish oil may actually trigger atrial fibrillation, uh, four grams a day and more, which is a lot. Uh, you know, Very often we're using well below a thousand milligrams a day, uh, 4,000 milligrams a day and up may trigger atrial fibrillation. So there is a little balance there. Not always is it more is better. I will finally say two last comments on Dr. Cousins' topics. Uh, A doctor I very much esteem. I don't think I'd ever see the day that Dr. Cousins would quote David Perlmutter. I like David. I think he's a personable guy. He's a great fisherman. I mean, his diet is a meat-heavy, ketogenic, anti-plant-based diet. I mean, he may eat a big kale salad. I'm not sure he eats kale. Some of the ketogenic people make fun of kale, like Dave Asprey, uh, as a undigestible green. But um, that's not who I would look to quote for my nutritional resources is uh, Dr. Perlmutter as much as he is a heck of a nice guy. And this idea that a low serum cholesterol promotes dementia is an old and scientifically invalid reverse causation uh, finding. Uh, The majority of dementia has to relate with vascular blood supply and whether it's macro carotid Uh, vertebral disease or micro small vessel white matter ischemic demyelination. Uh, If you've got clean arteries, your brain all the way out to the multiple branches, which is going to be contributed by by a a lower LDL cholesterol, you're going to avoid dementia. So the idea, it's very dangerous to hear a doctor as famous as Dr. Cousins say, a high cholesterol is to be encouraged. It's contrary to the thousand people a day that drop dead suddenly from cardiovascular disease, some of whom are dying predominantly due to high LDL cholesterol. It's, it's a disservice. 